Zack Snyder is pretty divisive, to say the least. I mean, there's people that love him, like really love him. And then there's people that can't stand him and they hate everything that he does. I've always been somewhere in the middle. I've seen a lot of his movies, I think most of them. And yeah, some of them I like. I think they're pretty good. And some of them are bad, like, like bad. But anyway, the thing is though, I'm always rooting for the guy because I like, I like his sensibility. I like his, his visual style. I'm always rooting for him. So how's his latest movie? Let's talk about Rebel Moon, part one, a child of fire. When a peaceful settlement on the edge of a distant moon finds itself threatened by the armies of a tyrannical ruling force, a mysterious stranger living among its villagers becomes their best hope for survival. The movie stars Sophia Batella, Mikhail Hausman, Ed Skrine, and Charlie Hunnam. Now the story goes that Zack Snyder took the germ of this idea over to Lucasfilm to pitch as like a, like a dark, maybe R-rated Star Wars film. And of course, Lucasfilm passed on that. But Netflix, Netflix said, hey, come on over here and do whatever you want. Let's, let's, let's do the thing. But first, give us a PG-13 version of the movie that we can release on the platform, and then we can do this whole double dip, director's cut, Zack Snyder's Rebel, I mean, wh whatever their, their plan is. But it's definitely a marketing ploy, and you have to know that going in. Snyder also recently did an interview where he basically said it's like a different version, like a completely new version of the movie, which kind of begs the question as to why that wasn't the version, I mean, other than the marketing, the obvious marketing ploy, you know, you put out the short version, the short abbreviated version first, get everybody to watch that, then later on release the, the big bad director's cut of the whatever, and it's just like, I'm kind of tired of hearing of directors doing that, you know? I mean, like, very famously, uh, Ridley Scott did that with Napoleon, and I, I just don't agree with that sensibility. Like, release the version that you want us to see. Why are you trying to get us to watch a version that you think is inferior? Now again, this is a part one. Second part is supposed to come out April 19th, 2024, which is called part two, The Scar Giver, which, you know, that's a thing. So I guess we look forward to that. There's no actual release date so far for these director's cuts. I saw 2025 for the director's cuts, but then I heard someone else say that it was supposed to come out next year. So I'm not really sure what the plan is. Now, the good thing about the movie is that it is gorgeously shot. I mean, Snyder doesn't mess around here. You know, he is giving you a new world. Now, you might say that the world is very derivative of some other things like Star Wars that we've seen, but I actually found myself really kind of taken in by the world, especially in that first act. I was really like, I was really down for it. I was like, okay, this, this isn't nearly as bad as people have been saying because the reviews have not been kind to this movie. So I was kind of worried, but so far, yeah, it's pretty good. I'll also say that there are moments of just sheer beauty. Like, there are some beautiful shots. The score is, uh, in many places, really, really well done. I mean, there were there were moments where it was like, wow, that's that sounds really good. That sounds really, really nice. And even some moments that seem very Hans Zimmer inspired, like almost from the Man of Steel soundtrack, which was one of my favorite soundtracks. I, I, I love I love the score for that movie. But But yeah, then there are some moments where I'm like, that seemed a little overdone, but like I said, there are moments of sheer brilliance. Since this is Zack Snyder, of course, we're going to have some slow motion stuff going on, and that's that's all cool. That's all fine and dandy, you know, if it fits the fits the, the moment. You putting on a cape going down a ramp, I'm not sure if that's necessary to do the slow motion there. I'm, I mean, I'm just, like, I'm just calling it like it is. I don't know if that's necessary, but that's a thing. Now, we haven't really talked about the story very much, but honestly, the story is very simple. It's very Seven Samurai-esque. You've got these farmers that can't protect themselves, and they're looking for someone to protect them. Sophia Batella's character goes out to basically hire mercenaries, kind of, to protect them. And it's very Seven Samurai-esque. And that's honestly really all you need to know to get started. The biggest problem with the movie, though, is... All of these characters are introduced in a in a almost paint by numbers kind of way, and it just feels it just feels so leisurely. And then the problem is you don't get the time to really 
you see them do things, but you don't know anything about the characters. And so the characterization is just, it's paper thin, paper thin. And I couldn't tell you the names of any of them. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, except for, except for one. Um, but, but honestly, the main character, Sophia Batella, is the only one that gets any sort of characterization that's meaningful at all. So what ends up happening is that you just feel like you're watching a series of events instead of a narrative, a flow, and this, this natural flow where you're getting to know the characters and through their actions and what they say to each other, what they say about each other, none of that happens. And it's, it's really kind of unfortunate because I found myself really digging the, the design work and the way that things looked. Some look highly detailed and, and rich and gorgeous. And then some are sort of just there and it just like, Hey, this is a different color. So it looks, it looks different. And it's, it, I don't know, it, it kind of turned me off on a couple of different worlds, I guess. There are also moments in the film where I'm sitting there watching it and it feels like the scene just ends. It just cuts off. And I think that might be because of these extended, maybe more violent or whatever. I mean, who knows? There might be a bunch of sex stuff in it. I don't know. All I know is that there, it feels very truncated in, in moments where I was like, oh, the, obviously that scene was meant to go on, but apparently it's probably R-rated, so they just cut away from it. I heard someone else say this, and it, and it kind of is true. It almost feels like a commercial for the director's cut instead of instead of it being its own thing. And even if it's, this is a part one, part two, how do, who knows how many parts they're going to be, but each one should stand on its own, and it should feel like it should feel like an, like a thing. You know, this is this is a thing instead of, oh, this is chapters one through six of this 30 page book or whatever. You know what I'm saying? It, it doesn't have any sort of real traditional narrative that that makes me feel like I'm watching something that I should care about. So overall, yeah, I'm 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 going to say that I, I, I wasn't a fan of, of this Rebel Moon part one, A Child of Fire thing. It's, 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 it felt much longer than it actually was. And I just, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I think that there's a lot of people that are Zack Snyder fans that are just going to eat this up and that they're going to think it's awesome. But to me, it just doesn't have a story. It doesn't have a, I mean, it has a story, but it doesn't have that narrative and that, that, I guess that flow with the characters. I just, I don't, I don't understand the point of doing a short version that's worse and put that out first. I I don't know. The whole thing seems strange to me. So, Rebel Moon. Um, I I don't know what else to say about it other than uh, than yeah, meh. That's just kind of how I feel about it. But I'd love to hear what you think about it. Let's talk about it in the in the comment section. I mean, let's keep it civil. You know, like I said, there's some passionate people on both sides, on both camps when it comes to Zack Snyder. But but let's keep it civil out there, right? But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. And we'll see you on the next one.